scientists do not agree about diet for autism. So I'm going to talk about a diet for autism that we have been supporting for nearly 30 years because it works so well for the autistics in our network. And here's what one mother says. We went on to the fail-safe diet and found that it's just made such a huge difference to him. I don't claim for a minute that he's cured, but all of his symptoms seem to have just decreased and he, it's like the mental fog has lifted and he started to kind of progress and pick up from where he'd sort of stopped progressing at about 18 months. Um, and physically he's just healthier. Um, his bowel problems have cleared up as well. Um, he's just much more able to learn and better able to cope with um, things that he would not have coped with before. Ethan's language has improved out of sight. He was um, at three and a half diagnosed with a severe speech disorder. He could speak but he didn't really make a lot of sense and since we've changed his diet his language has just grown out of sight and now he's sort of at a age-appropriate developmental level speech-wise and he's quite understandable and, and um, makes sense. Since the 1950s there has been a dramatic increase in the diagnosis of autism in children up to a thousand-fold increase in heavily populated cities in the US and experts do not know why. So obviously they're trying to find out and some of them use what they call an animal model of autism, that is, rats with autism. How do they get rats to have autism? They give them a chemical called propionic acid. This changes their brains and causes autistic behaviour, as you can see for yourself. What we noticed remarkably within two minutes of putting this propionic acid in, this animal immediately starts exhibiting some very peculiar behaviours. Obviously he's hyperactive and moving very quickly and then repetitive behaviors. Here you see an abnormal posture of walking with a hunchback and it's an unappreciated part of autism in that patients often have uh, toe walking, abnormal posturing, arched back. So now we'll place another animal that's been given propionic acid and a peculiar thing happens. They show None of the normal social greetings of uh, two rodents seeing each other. So the question is, if this chemical causes autism in rats, why would anyone give it to children? And the answer is that most children now eat this chemical every day because it is used as a preservative in common foods, especially breads, and flour products such as wraps, tortillas, pizza, pasta, noodles, but it is also permitted in a huge variety of processed foods, including products based on milks, meats, fruit and vegetables, desserts, confections, drinks, salads, condiments, soups, sauces, and it also occurs naturally in Swiss style cheeses and sourdough breads. In China, where it's now added to wet and dry noodles, a recent survey found that the prevalence of autism has become comparable to what is happening in the West. I first found, noticed this additive about 30 years ago when it was introduced into Australian breads because we already knew that our daughter was affected by some additives, colours and preservatives. So I watched while she ate this new bread. On day five, her teacher called me in and said, what's going on? She had started lying on the floor during class. She seemed very confused and was losing her ability to do schoolwork. This was the worst food reaction that we had ever seen. So I contacted the National Food Authority and they didn't want to know about it. So I did a study looking at the behavioural effects of this new bread preservative in children who already had behaviour and learning problems. And we found that about 50% of them were affected with symptoms such as irritability, restlessness, inability to pay attention, sleep disturbance and many more. 
and after it was published I heard from families all over Australia who had been dealing with similar issues. This is little Christopher. When he was born he cried or screamed for 18 hours a day every day until his mother was put on the elimination diet and it turned out to be the bread preservative going through her breast milk that was causing his stomach cramps and diarrhoea. In this photo he's now 21 months and still having terrible pain and diarrhoea within hours if he eats the bread preservative by mistake. This mother wrote, my three-year-old son was going to be assessed for autistic disorders. Since taking him off all commercial bread the change in four months has been amazing. So the changes she saw involved speech. He went from having a severe speech delay with just two words to a normal vocabulary for his age and his behaviour is so much better. Less tantrums, sleeps better, easier to get along with. But it's not only children who are affected. This woman wrote, on diet my ex-husband with Asperger's was a lot more emotionally and socially connected. Bread with 282 was his major addiction. Nearly 20 years after I did my study, scientists in America have found a connection between propionate preservatives and brain cell, autistic type brain cell disruption. Their findings suggest that there could be a link between eating these preservatives in processed food during pregnancy and the rise of autism. So it would seem to make sense for families to avoid these additives, but it's not that easy. These are the numbers and names of propionate preservatives. And this failsafer from England wrote, almost all the bread in the UK has 282 in it. They call it calcium propionate and everyone thinks it's calcium. Trickers. Well, speaking of trickers, the food industry is now working very hard to hide these additives in what's called the clean label movement where they like to remove chemical names and numbers and replace them with innocent sounding ingredients such as cultured or fermented anything like dextrose, whey, wheat flour, rice flour with a no artificial preservatives claim. And you can see on this example here, fermented wheat flour. So the best way to avoid propionate preservatives is to avoid processed food unless shoppers can find something like this traditional type bread. No preservatives, not just no artificial preservatives. But of course when people have autism they tend to think of the gluten-free, casein-free diet and these days gluten-free bread is likely to contain propionate preservatives. In the example we've got here is called cultured dextrose. So this mother wrote, overnight my four-year-old daughter on gluten-free diet became completely unmanageable. Anxiety, meltdowns, hurting herself. Why? They had switched to a different gluten-free bread with preservative. But it took this mother eight weeks to work that out. Then I threw it in the bin. The meltdowns and self-harming stopped the next day. So speaking of the gluten-free, casein-free diet, this review looked at six studies on the gluten-free, casein-free diet and concluded that there is little evidence that a gluten-free, casein-free diet is beneficial for the symptoms of autism in children. Well, we don't agree with that because we certainly see lot, lots of the autistics in our network who need to avoid gluten and or dairy. But they need to avoid a lot of other things as well. And here are some examples. In 2007, a study funded by the UK government at, run at the Southampton University looked at the effect of artificial colours 
on the general population of children, not just children with behaviour problems. And they found that normal, healthy children could be affected. And that these additives can reduce the ability of children to benefit from schooling. So as a result of that study, since 2010 in Europe, any of the six artificial colours identified in that study have to contain, have to have, to have a warning on the label, may have an adverse effect on behaviour and attention in children. But from our point of view, that's not enough. Altogether, there are about 50 additives that have been identified causing those problems. That includes all artificial colours, two natural colours, five groups of preservatives, synthetic antioxidants such as BHA and flavour enhancers, that is MSG type additives, glutamates, glutamate containing ingredients like yeast extract, soy protein and there are many more. And that's not counting added flavours either. So here's an example. My four-year-old autistic son is on the gluten-free, casein-free diet and it was helping. But for two weeks he has been really terrible again. Why? Because he had started eating soy yogurt with annatto colouring in it. Now for some of the autistics in our network, annatto is the very worst additive of all and you can see the deep bruising on this little boy's forehead that was caused by head banging after eating a natto natural colour. So natural food chemicals can be a problem too. And here's what another mother wrote. Uh, this was a, an Asperger's child on the gluten-free casein-free diet and it was helping but she wrote he is a different child without tomatoes and apples. Failsafe has helped him majorly with focus and attitude in all areas. So why tomatoes and apples? Well, the thing is that they contain natural chemicals called salicylates or sals. These are in what people like to think of as the healthiest foods available. Most fruit and some vegetables in varying amounts. In the 1970s, when highly processed food was first becoming widely, wide, widely available, Dr. Ben Feingold in America was one of the first to link the additives in these new foods and also salicylates to children's behaviour and learning disabilities. And you might wonder why. Since the 1950s, children are eating a lot more salicylates because they are concentrated in processed foods. For example, fruit juices, flavours like strawberry flavoured yoghurt, concentrates like tomato paste and sauces. And parents never see the effects of salicylates because it's a delayed reaction or a slow build up and the symptoms seem to come and go with no obvious cause. When we first heard about salicylates, I said, well, thank goodness they don't affect us. I couldn't have been more wrong. But it took six years for us to take it seriously, to do the elimination diet, and we found that everyone in our family was affected by salicylates in different ways, and I'd wasted those six years. And another, this other, another mother wrote, the same thing. She said, ah, it sounded too hard. I wasn't going to avoid salicylates. When she did take it seriously, his biggest problem turned out to be salicylates and colours. So here's another report. My family responded well to the gluten-free casein-free diet for about three weeks and then began to backslide. I was so frustrated until I read about salicylates and amines. Of course, when we went gluten-free casein-free, we loaded up on fruit and all the other bad foods. No wonder it seemed to have failed. So the diet we support is similar to Dr. Feingold's diet, but it avoids more additives and more natural chemicals. It's called the RPAH Diagnostic Elimination Diet from the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney. And this is how it works. For three weeks, there's strict elimination of the 50 additives, also three natural chemicals, so salicylates, amines that are in foods like 
chocolate, bananas, uh, strong tasting cheese, also in protein foods like fish and meat that aren't fresh enough. And then there are glutamates which are a natural form of MSG in products like soy sauce and also dairy foods and gluten and fragrance products have to be avoided. The second stage is systematic challenges with each group of food chemicals to find out exactly which food chemicals are causing which problems and everyone is different so this is a really important step. Then the third stage is reintroduction to the level of tolerance for that child and the good news is that their level of tolerance will actually increase as they grow bigger. Now we actually call this fail-safe eating um, because families find it easier to say and talk about and fail-safe stands for free of additives and low in salicylates, amines and flavour enhancers. This is a list of the symptoms that can improve on the elimination diet. Headaches, migraines, head banging, eczema, hives, rashes, itching, swelling, irritable bowel, reflux, mouth ulcers, bloating, bedwetting, asthma, stuffy and runny nose, frequent colds and infections like ear infections, tonsillitis, urinary tract infections. Then there's a whole range of behavioural or learning type problems that have been reported by autistics on this diet as uh, they improved. Fussy eating, poor eye contact, poor social skills, speech delay, fine or gross motor delay, poor concentration, restlessness, hand flapping, stimming, irritability, defiance, inattention, hyperactivity, agitation, tantrums, meltdowns, rages, aggression, violence, mood swings, defiance, anxiety, depression and others, tics, seizures, heart palpitations, joint pain. And obviously I don't have time to look at all of those, but bowel problems are one of the most common problems for autistics, including stomach aches, diarrhea and or constipation, a feeling of incomplete evacuation and what we call sneaky poos. And this is what this mother wrote. My six-year-old son was diagnosed with incapricis, given drugs that didn't work and was soiling his pants every day at school. It was horrible. We had amazing success with the diet. He started pooing in the toilet every day and the pants soiling stopped almost immediately. And Howard would like to comment on the science. There is a lot of good evidence of distinctive gut microbiota in autistics with higher levels of particular metabolites like propionates. It's also been shown that changing gut microbiota, for instance by faecal transplants, alters behaviour and many of the physical symptoms of autism, at least for a time. We don't know yet whether the altered gut microbiota are the cause of ASD or simply a consequence of the same underlying causes of autism. But changes in the gut due to diet do provide a plausible mechanism for many of the effects that parents observe. After all, if you swallow a chemical preservative designed to kill bacteria in the food, one might expect it to also kill bacteria in your gut, with consequences. Now, remember that you also have to avoid fragrances on the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital diet. This involves products like toiletries, household cleaners, air fresheners and so on. This mother didn't take perfume products seriously at all for a whole year on the diet and then she wrote we are now without perfumed products at home and using vinegar and bicarb for cleaning. For the first time we have a normal boy. After a lifetime of lovely smells I have traded vanity for an angel. Now this is really interesting because in 2003 there was a study with 49 autistic children on a very limited diet and some of them were put in a what scientists call a clean room to completely avoid environmental chemicals and the researcher concluded that a broad spectrum of severe and chronic autistic symptoms appear to be fully reversible. Now this is what we find. 
with some of the children in our group. If parents can take the diet and environmental chemicals seriously enough, then they can sometimes see remarkable results. And I'm going to finish with some examples. This one is from a teacher of autistics talking about a five-year-old. When on failsafe, he was back to all normal development. If he ate something off the diet, then he would be in the corner, banging his head on the wall with no speech at all. And from a mother, my Aspie son went from sitting under his desk, we were told he'd never hold a pencil, to an A-grade student, thanks to the failsafe diet, gluten-free and dairy-free. Best thing we ever did for him. And from the mother of a 12-year-old, we went full elimination for my high-functioning autistic 12-year-old son a year ago and had amazing results. Teachers couldn't believe the difference. I only wish we had known about failsafe when he was younger. And from the mother of a 17-year-old who was diagnosed at the age of five with autism, mild intellectual disorder and severe language disorder. At the age of 12, when he had been following Failsafe for five years, the mother took him back to be reassessed. She wrote, the change was so dramatic that the psych no longer considered him autistic. At the age of 17, he still had to stay on the diet. But on a day-to-day -day basis, she wrote, he is really happy, beautifully behaved and in great health. I wish I had understood Failsafe earlier. So for more information, there's this bit.ly Diet for Autism link, which includes references for this presentation. There's support from our Facebook group, the Sue Dengate Failsafe group. And there's heaps more information on our, our website, the Food Intolerance Network website, fedup.com.au. Thanks for watching.